Well, good morning. As we're sitting here at LTV on this beautiful morning, Wednesday morning, June 26th, year 2024, here with the Hello Hello Show. My name is Haim Mizrahi, continuing with the tradition of public access and the Hello Hello Show that's been on the air since 1980. Of course, not to fail to mention the contribution by Fraser Dargerty, Francis Ann, and of course the likes of you out there will make it your business to enhance and fortify this concept. Rightfully so, as we enjoy a wonderful entity here at the, um, the East End, the LTV in, in Mainscott, New York. And even more so to say that I'm very happy to have uh, Ava, um, I'll just say Ava Rado, that is uh, uh, here with us. <clears throat> the thing is, it, it, the interesting, first of all, thank you so much for showing up this morning to enlighten us with your presence. Um, and you. in in a very interesting way, I I I feel like, we can uh, know each other in a way that we don't know each other in a way that we know each other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Right? But, 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 so, so, <laughs> the, the, so, so, so there is, so there, so there is, so the, so there is a, uh, a, a very appealing uh, a mystery there that we want to unfold uh, as we gather. So, first of all, as I said, welcome to the show. As I know you had to travel quite a bit to get here, so it's even much more appreciated for that. And um, so uh, I, I just want Eva to give me a few words about Eva. Oh, are you kidding me? Where do you want me to start? I thought you said you're going to ask me questions. You want you want to know about me? Um, Eva, I'm going to stop the show if... Uh... You're not going to no, I enjoy am. the moment. I am. I'm enjoying it. I will stop it. Okay. Okay. Let's really enjoy it. Okay. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Are we still on? Yes, we're on. <laughs> so I'm being me. Uh, yeah, I really am happy that you invited me or, or the way it happened that um, I am on your show and I think your show is important because I watched a few of your episodes and it brings a lot to the community and it gets to know people in the community. I don't drop names and I forget names but I don't forget the way I feel when I'm in the presence of a certain person or when I talk to a certain person and I met you before I even met you because I saw your paintings uh, at the Roger Memorial uh, Library and I said oh okay and then I ran into you at uh, Oshwag and I said yeah he's everywhere he's like me he's a hustler a good hustler do you know the meaning of a hustler? Yes. Uh, there are bad connotations in the United States. But in Hungarian, when a person is the way you are or the way I am, who goes after what they love and what they like to do, is called, I don't know, we have no names for each other. And uh, I think you're a great painter. And Thank uh, you. Yeah. You are. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, the purpose of you being here, just like uh, thousands of them that came across this show in, in the last 27 years, is because I want to bring to the fore forefront, as I do every time, whether I have a, a, a guest or not, uh, the whole concept of uh, art fights evil, art stabilizes society, art maintaining the decency of uh, of point of reference and... and, and uh, of and thought itself uh, for what it stands for, and art also is a healer. Um, art is a friend. Art is is company that uh, that enhances the concept of what that which is coherent and civilized. Exactly. So uh, that's what I want to talk to you about. Not about uh, what you're going to have. Yes, we can mention the show next week and and your contribution because it's it's a given that your contributions are very important. But I want to hear what's in your heart, what's in your head. I want to I want to I want to talk to you about the sacred moments of painting and 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 the evolutionary process that takes place every day all over again. These are the things I want to talk to you about. So and I think that you have 
something to offer to the community. I want to unfold that so people will get to know who Ava is. And I think that this hour that we have ahead of us can give us the opportunity, A, to get to know each other better, B, to have the community getting to know who you are and what you're all about. So the stage is yours, really. Yeah. Uh, I want to know about you. I want to know where you were born. Where, what was your ancient journey? How did you get to where you are? In, in summarize it. Just in a couple of minutes of, a, of here I am. Okay. Right. <laughs> or not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a long, no. long history, but it's okay. But, um, but for, for example, art governs your life in more ways than one, correct? Art happens to be my life. If I didn't do art, I couldn't survive. And um, I process my life through. Uh, I'm, I am my paintings. I, that is uh, who I am. And uh, such as uh, a couple of months, ago, well, maybe about two years ago, I had a memory come to me, which was the candle lighting on a Friday night by my grandfather. I may have been about five years old in Budapest. And there I was with my mom and my grandfather and my aunt and uncle. And it just brought back memories because I never saw him after that because he went to Israel as a Zionist. And of course, uh, my dad did not come back from the war. He died in Dhaka which I never knew until I went to the Roger Memorial Library. The libraries are becoming a, like a sanctuary. Where, As it should be, yes. Yeah. And it's full of knowledge and exposure. And it depends on the library, the programming that they have. And they had a genealogist. Uh, I think it's called genealogist. Yes. Ancestry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she looked up a lot of my backgrounds. And uh, the same grandfather, I went to uh, the village. There were big landowners uh, up on northern east of Hungary uh, on the border of Ukraine. I mean, Hungary, the Hungarian Austrian Empire was huge. Yes. And it encom encompassed a lot of countries, which was cut down in. Uh, um, 1914, after the First World War, the tri Trianon, uh, it just cut away. So it, it, it's really shrunk. And last summer, I went to, uh, I was invited to, in Hungary, to an artist residency. And after that, I went on a journey and visited where my mom was born. And it was amazing. It was a village, but a village that was totally destroyed, or at least the Hebrew heritage. I don't like the word Jewish. I just don't. The Hebrew heritage was destroyed. The synagogues, everything else. So I'm going off the track. So That's I'm, okay. No, no, let's okay. continue. But, continue. But when I did do the charcoal, I processed my feelings. And I got to know myself a little bit better because under communism, and of course, being born uh, in 1941, and here I'm only 49 years old, but I was born in 1941, uh, I was hidden and all that. And my mom went through a lot during the war. And I never really realized it until I accepted the fact that I am, I was born Hebrew, and that is part of me, and it's part of my heritage. So, but but the uh, but the artistic feelings they're more universal in 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 your path in your journey. Yes, yes, and uh, my escape in 1956, um, the Hungarian Revolution, we we left and we crossed the border, and my whole journey is written in a book called uh, Towards a Better Life, mm -hmm. America's New Immigrants, which a lot of people uh, were interviewed. And a lot of the people who were interviewed for that, some of them live out here in the East End. 
and it's their journey uh, to America. Mm -hmm. One of them, he doesn't live here. He lives uh, elsewhere. Chef Pepin. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he yeah, yeah. was an immigrant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Emilio Estefan came from Cuba, age 15. Well, I, we escaped when I was 15. Yes. And had a journey that started in America. And so I, I would assume that this journey is embedded in, in, in the, not only the kind of art you're, you're creating, but with, with the feeling and the, and the kind of psychological background. Everything's in my, I, my being is in my work. And when COVID hit, I was locked in. And the only thing, we were all locked in and couldn't go out, couldn't socialize. So that expedited the artistic process for you. And that's how I got through COVID by getting in the car. I love driving. And the faster I can drive, the happier I am. However, we don't do that. Sometimes I do on the country roads, but that's, that's a hush-hush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because the last speeding ticket I got was three hundred and sixty some dollars. Yes, and that was again that was <laughs> rushing to get to a panel that was discussing my the grant application from the Center for Emerging Art. Yes, and um, so art has always been my drive. It's in me, and it was in me as a child. And I remember when I was about 35, 36 years old, I had a huge canvas, well, three feet by uh, four feet or, or a meter by a meter or two meters yeah. by two meters. I had a painting on the wall, and my mom flew up. I lived in New Jersey at the time, and my mom flew up uh, to see me and, the, and my kids, and she looked at the painting, and she says, I did not know you were a master. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was like that is the epitome <laughs> of any critic, anyone that could say about me yeah. or my work. Yeah, and you know what? Just because you mentioned it, I can tell you that the only time that my father referred long before I ever even contemplated that I would ever become an artist at something, at, at one of the artistic attempts that I tried to do, he looked at me with his face expression, this kind of almost like borderline feeling sorry for me, like saying, what exactly are you doing? And he didn't have to continue. Once he said that, it was like, uh-oh. He just ruined everything for me. So that means if I had any aspirations, I mean, I was, uh -huh. I was maybe thirteen. Yeah. But but I valued the moment so much, but I was so disappointed that he couldn't help himself but place a premature opinion. You know, mm -hmm. even though he's my father. You know yeah. what I mean? So apropos, you know, you uh, you, is... you bought your world by accepting this wonderful a pearl from your mother that she just, yeah. by the way, stated. Well, and she my, had to be generous to do that. Well, my mother was a very talented woman. And I inherited that from her. And my mother was able to make the best and be the best. And uh, when we came to America, uh, we lived one month or maybe more in uh, free, not free. Well, I went to Freehold High School. I went to a lot of schools and I went to Freehold High for, uh, for a while. And then I went to Miami Beach uh, and f senior high school. And then I went to uh, Pittsburgh, Older Dice. And I was always the one, oh, she is from. Uh, and interviewed for the newspaper, local newspaper, for the high school papers. And um, so you were mentioning your mother, apropos. I know. And that's why I mentioned her, because we came and we stayed with her sister, had a 
a farm on your, in New Jersey. And then we stayed in Miami Beach, and she, we had a farm. And she says, "I'm not gonna live. I'm I'm not gonna live with my sisters." And we went uh, a distant family. We lived on Sunset Island with them, uh, and then we lived. We went to Pittsburgh with them. And what I'm saying is that. Uh, my favorite saying that there is no free lunch. Uh, my mom was independent, self-supporting. I became very independent, self-supporting. And I had to do that uh, in order to be who I am and in order to do what I love. And uh, so... But, but what about the guy? I'd like to hear a little bit about the guidelines, that which will prevent... About what? The guideline, that, that which will prevent you from finding yourself in territory that you would rather not be. You know, when you say there's no free lunch... Uh, there I, isn't. No, there no, is, but, but... There's but, a but, price but, for everything. I know, I know. I, I hear you, I hear you, but but I'm, try, I'm trying to add a, a layer, a, a layer, a meaningful layer to it by saying that the, if you deserve that lunch, it can be for free. But eventually, it's not for free because uh, because you had to work for it, even if it was indirectly. But the thing is, well, how do we set up the rules where we will not find ourselves so far out that it will be almost impossible to get back to square one where we were supposed to be and spend more time there? Well, maybe we have to stay far out to be who we are. And I have to be far out, and I have been far out, and I've been criticized for that because I just don't fit into a cookie cutter. Yeah. And I have, I have made films. I have graphic design. I have taught photography, and when you have, you're a- running out of fingers now, <laughs> <laughs> and then you repeat the fourth one. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. but I was. But, always... but I'm sure that your level of awareness was always intact, even while you were kind of far out venturing and and freestyling or whatever. It wasn't venturing. It wasn't freestyling. It was doing what I know to do. What what comes out of me. You see, the paintings that are going to be at the uh, Hampton the fair. Fine Arts yeah. fair mm-hmm. they're going to be there because. I want to I really I made a decision quite a while ago that those paintings will support cancer patients cancer I started there have been a lot of cancer in my family yeah, but I don't want to go there too fast. But, I want to stay, but but I, I want to stay closer to home that... now. I'll tell you why. There's a good reason why I'm okay. saying. You know that I'm not disrespecting that right. forbid. I know there's a lot of suffering out there. Oh, there is. But people don't understand that as artists, we have to go through a substantial amount of pain mm-hmm. in the studio, especially you yourself and you. That mm-hmm. concept is very vivid in our lives. Yeah. Even if I was to consider my life completely enlightening and happy, it was still still have to go through a substantial amount of morbidness in the yeah. studio. I have to cut through it. I cannot bypass. You know that better than me. Yeah, and you so have I- to let that out. And for me to let my life out, and for me, what drives me, what's within me, it goes on the canvas. But we don't the spare other- ourselves from the pain. We, no, we no, no, that's no, the point. Definitely. So when we I want to talk, for example, about people's misery or illnesses or cancer or whatever, the concept of helping people is noble in itself. It has nothing to do with noble. No, no. Because no. when I, I question when I, myself why I'm doing it, I'm doing it because it makes a difference. I mean, I know. It makes a difference in in my and life. And that spells goodness. It makes a difference in my life to help another. Correct. And okay. That's, that... And now, if my paintings make a difference in somebody else's life, then by gosh, that person or whoever it is will understand that because my my work and my paintings speak for myself and who's around me and and, and if, they will most definitely will right i mean i had a gallery and i firmly believe you don't need any 
curators. You don't need any directors in a gallery. You put a dog or a cat in the middle of the gallery, leave the door open, and if that painting speaks to the viewer, then that painting, that, that viewer will want that painting. Whether he buys it or not, it's none of my business. But that means something to me. I mean, when I lived in New York, I was at the Whitney Museum and as a docent and whatever needed to be done. And that was back in the early 80s. And there was a big, large painting of Julian Schnabel. And this woman looked at it and says, oh, that's disgusting. That's horrible. That's, that's, ooh. And I looked at her, I said, you know what? That is a good painting. And the reason that's a good painting, because it evoked an emotion in you. Yeah. Whether it evokes a good or, or bad, bad it's or still, whatever, or without label. It carries but the same value. it's an emotion, and it's some, it was something, and it's in my paintings, uh, there's something in that painting that communicates to the person who's looking and viewing the painting. And that's well said. But how do we resist the temptation to bring into the equation ourselves in the center of things, and which is, there's nothing wrong with it, but obviously it will stop us and slow us down when it comes to the real, the heat of the moment of creation, mm -hmm. when we know that every moment counts and we know that time is scarce and we know that we don't, always get to have three, four, seven, nine hours to create, you know, mm -hmm. it's almost like fiction, yeah. especially me with five kids. You, 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 you seek you were and available achieve. five times. Correct. To, to, to Correct. do your passion. But, but I see. And that culminated in probably I, beautiful five kids. Yes. But I seek and I find solace in the fact that if I ever thought that I lose myself into something that is other than my passion, mm -hmm. slowly enough I realize that I can independently create two separate levels of coherence in order to be able to function here properly and here properly. So being politically correct in the world of art is sometimes uh, the trick that solves the problems of all problems, which, which, might, which can be just about anything. But when you speak about your journey, how do you know when you uh, push it just a little too far by way of thinking, by way of expressing, uh, by way of actually executing that sense of immediacy? So, because I see that you, you, you have a, 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 the contents are full. So where is it released to? That means where is it when, when you open a, a center, when you promote a, a place where people can dwell and are allowed to dwell mm -hmm. and so much more? What, what, what is where? where uh, <laughs> I have the question. I have the question. If you come out. What, what, what are the broad crimes that you left behind you as you went into the thickness of the forest? You know how we spread those uh, breadcrumbs so we would know the, the way back? Uh -huh. But then we would realize that the birds ate all the breadcrumbs and we cannot find our way home. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go back. No, no, no. I no. really don't want to go back. I'm talking about the and spiritual you know what? home. The breadcrumbs that the, the, I have scattered, <laughs> let other people find and process it. But you know what? You know why you have to find, be able to find your, your way back? Because there are people waiting for you that depend on you there. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. And if they depend on me, shh, shh, it's, it's, shh. it's a metaphor. It's just I a know, form of I know, yourself. I know. But I mean, you know, you, 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 it, even in, 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 in the most extreme feeling of wanting to be a, uh, uh, promote your individualism. I'm not promoting. No, no, I'm not talking about I'm not you. Promoting. I'm, if you're attracted to I'm not talking I'm about doing. you. I'm talking no, no. about yeah, okay. the cons a universal concept. Uh -huh. I'm not, I'm not. What I'm trying to say is that uh, I, sh I share the understanding and the feeling with you because I feel like you're talking about things that are very familiar to me. 
extremely. I know. Any, and probably anything that you That's would... That's why we can relate to yeah, each other. And, and, so, and probably anything that would come out of your mouth until the end of this show is, would be things that I'll be able to relate to. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but anyway, finish that thought that you had before. I will... Rem- what was the thought? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were so eager to finish your... So anyway, no, no, what, but, what, what no, I'm trying to say, right uh, that individualism that I was talking about okay. is something that not only shapes who we, who we are, is, is making, it's something that making sure that we have the reservoir of whatever, tools or whatever, mm-hmm. so we will get there. Yeah. In a timely fashion, mm-hmm. because it's not only about achieving your goal, but if you're going to achieve your goal in 70 years from now, obviously that's not going to work. Mm. There's got to be a reasonable timeline. Mm-hmm. And for that, you have to slave. You have to work very hard, mm-hmm. I find. Well, I think that we have to work very hard every day. We have to work hard very well. I don't call it work. I don't work. I don't work. Uh, I closed the gallery around 1995, 96. I had it in New York before I went to Miami in 1989. I went down there for 10 days and I stayed for 30 years. And I opened the gallery when Miami Beach was just starting. And it's my journey. And uh, the journey before that, we can talk about that, but who wants to go back that far, okay? And the gallery, I was doing very well. I became the, uh, oh, I don't know what you call it. But I started, uh, I was involved with the Bass Museum, with the Lowe Museum. I was president of the Lowe Museum Impact Group. And what the Impact Group did is to have, to get together. So... And it was wonderful. We went to visit artist studios. When uh, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know how. I, I mean, does it sound like bragging? No. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you are, then why? I what? don't want to so brag bad. because <laughs> okay. I don't believe in bragging. We have all the time in the world we here. Do, so we do. <laughs> I th- my listen, I, I, Either way, after five I, years, I closed the gallery and uh, I became founding director of a nonprofit arts organization. And I was able to put together a lot of wonderful programs uh, that healed me and helped others. One of them was taking a program. You see, when people are busy, creating or drawing or designing they start talking with each other and the first grant that i got in miami was to go into an assisted living or or uh, independent living and they all got together and we videoed that and they talked and it's very healing but once Then I did a program at the Bass Museum, postcard from the past, and they did their vacations, what they'd done. And and in Woodstock, when I lived, had a house up there, upstate, uh, I got, I, I, I create these programs that are healing for me. And if it, if I feel it heals me. Then it will heal others. Then it heals others. I worked uh, at the that Miami Beach uh, Community Center, which was on Espanola Way, which is closed by now. I worked with the elderly, uh, some of them processed being survivors of the Holocaust. Others just, they survivors. And we did Pastel Paradise, because that's what Miami Beach was for them. Uh, once they retired, uh, they, moved, they all moved to Miami Beach. And, uh, and it was healing for them. And it helped me, it helped me being me to be able to do. I did, in, I mean, the funding was fabulous. International Cultural Exchange. 
where performers were able, I was able to get granted from having performers from South Florida go over to Hungary, St. Petersburg, and having artists, performers come from Hungary, Budapest, or St. Petersburg to perform in Florida. Yeah. I mean, I did wonderful things that helped them. Of course, it helped me because yes. I love traveling. Yes, of course. And yes. then the political situation changed. Different uh, governors came in, and each governor has its own idea of uh, pro that they like. Yes. Okay, so one of them was let's bring industry to Miami Beach. One of them was let's bring uh, uh, tourism to uh, Miami Beach. Yes. And they destroyed the cultural canvas that we created in the 90s and early 2000s. And one of the reasons Art Basel came to Miami Beach, I think it was like 2006 or four, was because of the work that we artists did. Yes. And the artists got driven out from the beach. Which is a, yeah. Well, and I mean, and you know, that's what I, happens. But, but it, the, these things good. are to be anticipated. But what about the emerging center of, art, art, of arts that, we, that we're talking about as we speak now? Yeah. I would like to hear. I would like to hear more specific things that are relating to uh, to, to to this uh, okay. the concept in reality. Yeah, the concept in reality is that everything that I've done during COVID was done to stay healthy, and to stay who I am. And by staying healthy, I drove the country roads. I drove through and past golf courses, and all my work ever since I can remember, and when I look back, one of the paintings that was at the, in Lakeland uh, at the museum was painted at a time where I was feel that I was drowning. I was drowning within myself. I was drowning with, uh, with the work, with the gallery that I was doing. And but that was due to what? My processing the present moment. Okay. And that was the one that was accepted uh, to be in the museum. And I don't know how the uh, paintings that I did during COVID will be accepted. However, I want those paintings to heal others who might be suffering with the pain that they're going through. And it doesn't have to be bought. I want every penny for me that comes in, whether it's donation or purchase, to go towards establishing and re, re, uh, I can't say reinventing because this is the first time that I will be uh, doing something uh, for cancer patients and cancer relatives, and. Um, and I'm doing it because I think it's important, and I'm doing it because it will, it will be, it will be me having to be able to get whatever is within me to have the art is healing program established. Yeah, and you could call it anything. You could call it. I don't know. I mean, yeah, well, it's really it's really irrelevant what name it carries. Okay. It's the so essence anyway, of it. All of that. You describe and, and you the essence what? of it in a you very good what? way, in a I very mean, efficient I, way. Yeah, and I think I'm doing it because it makes me feel good yeah. to be able to do it. It made me feel good when I was able to donate a painting in uh, Westchester County to an art auction that they had, and that was also uh, a golfer painting. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is that uh, attracts me to golfer paintings. I, I really don't. But of course, I, let's not get personal. <laughs> <laughs> I have no intention in getting personal. But, I don't but have I'm a golfer a, in my life I, I know, yeah, well, anyway, 
I, I want to take you closer to okay. the to the uh, but, to to the moment where oh you have want to finish the year. No, no, well, it's okay. But I want to, as far as the East End is concerned, you know, say that again. The, as far as the East End is concerned, yeah. Yeah. you know, the the volume of human material, uh, human qualities mm -hmm. when it comes to art and artists. Is 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 I am is, not... is is impeccable. I want to know how you where do you fit in how that in that ocean in, 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 in this in. ocean of talent. The artists of community will fit in. That once the art is healing, is uh, can be established. But with the funding that comes in, then I be able to bring in Eastern artists to work with the cancer patient or the. Uh, or the relatives of the cancer patients. Uh, and that's what I was doing with the Center for Emerging Art for 20 some odd years in Florida. I just want to live back up here. I mean, I lived in Fort Lee, I lived in Manhattan, and I gave up a three bedroom duplex uh, in Manhattan in order to be able to do what I do. In 1989, I went down, I said before, for 10 days, and I got a 10 by 14 studio on Ocean Drive, and I was able to be healing, healing my previous life, and I'm healing all of me by healing others and art is healing definitely and you cannot find a better thing reality than art in order to achieve what you describe and music now. does the same of music course, there's course. so many it's, different arts it's, it's included in the world of arts in, yeah. the, in the reality yeah. of arts mm -hmm. but uh, i first of all let me just mention that we are sitting here with the eva Eva Arado, Eva Arado, uh, Eva Arado, and may and, Mr. And, Hart rest and, in and peace. And Racheli, Racheli, did you say <laughs> what? The Hebrew name was what? Uh, oh, Eva Livia Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> so I'm going to call you Racheli. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, they used to call my mom used to call me Evika. 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 Okay, Evika. That's a sweet name. <laughs> uh, and we're we're happy to have her here. Yeah, I I, uh, I I like the fact that you. Uh, but I do think that the, the way that you express what you express is very. Uh, um, you can't help yourself to to uh, project um, uh, innocence and also kindness. Yeah. So and I, and I, I may I, offend some people, but that's okay. And um, and uh, you can definitely be a handful. <laughs> oh, I really am. <laughs> And my, my, my <laughs> and I only say that to people I love, you know. I that. know that. And my my husband, the father of my wonderful children, used to say, "If you did not exist, they would have to invent you." Invent you? I know that's a great way of describing I know. you. <laughs> it's totally me. So, but uh, but I but, do think that we ought to talk to possibly a cancer patient who grew up in uh, Southampton. There's also a lot of cancer patients in the East End that were exposed to chemicals, the chemicals that had to be cleared up in Sac Harbor and in other parts of the environment on the East End. And I know very little about that except the fact that uh, one of the developers uh, in Sac Harbor had couldn't build on his property until all the harmful chemicals, and they are ca cancer producing. I mean, look what yes. ha happened yes. in Chernobyl. Look what's happening with the big Indian and all the other power plants yes. that that are cancer uh, producing in people. And then, of course, within pe within people, stress produces cancer. It it does because the body heals itself. And if the if there's too much stress in a person's life, and they don't know how to process it, they become ill. And there are many forms of illnesses. One of the biggest one nowadays is cancer. The other program that I did in Miami, and I was 
in Miami Beach High School and in uh, the Coral Gables Middle School and the Miami Beach Middle School is, and that was about drugs. Because a lot of kids are dying of drug. And we did, uh, I mean, we did a program uh, that dealt with death cards and the kids had to produce a, a drawing of the different drugs, which was in the, uh, I worked with the football coach at, at Beach High. And at the time when they were going through, um, football uh, coaches do have textbooks that they cover with, with the students, but it was about drugs. And each kid created a different uh, Expression, card, yes. A different card, yes. starting from uh, ace to king. Uh, a joker was uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of, lot of people dry. And all those things are drugs. And the, the I don't know what to call them, but um, whatever it is, it's, it's, I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. But there are certain way that all of that could be eliminated. I have had friends, uh, well, no, they didn't know widows, uh, but I have had relatives that got cancer from spray paint from, from and, and one of the first uh, exhibition in my gallery was uh, graffiti is art. And now 35, 40 years later, they have the graffiti at the Southampton Art Center, which is wonderful. Yeah. And the thing is, but now we have the awareness to wear masks. But she was 36 years old when she died of lung cancer. Why? Because she was refurnishing, re refinishing antiques and she was using spray paint. And one of the first things that have to be done is awareness. Yeah, of course, and that, that would lead back And to... that would go through the artist healing and it has many different, I mean, I yes. have it all. Uh, we just need the funding yeah. and I am not ready to jump through hoops. I am not an ask sir. I don't know how to ask for money to support the artist healing. Mm -hmm. But however, I do know how to I do know how to write a proposal. Yes. And, yeah. <clears throat> and it's not like in Florida. Yep. And uh, so I am where I am. The paintings will go up on the wall. Yeah, the so I wanted to lounge. talk about the uh, the art fair yeah, and with all the information. This is the opportunity to talk about it. So right. that's going to take place July 11th to, 11 to 14. To 14. Yeah. So, so tell us a little more about what's going to take place there. Uh, what role like, do you play there? It was June 4th. I don't know how it happened, but it was put in my life somehow. And I said, yeah, I will do it. So the first, uh, he offered me uh, online video, online, uh, online gallery, which mm -hmm. would run all year. I said, no, for a certain amount of money. And I said, no, thank you. And then he said, well, you could have a small area for a certain amount of money. I said, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I mean, it's really not about the money, but it is location. And it's the same in real estate. It's location, location, location. And uh, the reason I'm bringing up, because one of the uh, support sponsors of the Center for Emerging Art in Florida was Century 21 where they had 9,000 square feet of offices and conference rooms. And uh, they, gave me, they gave me a corner office, and we did four events there, a uh, concert, uh, Christmas bazaar, discussion, art auction, 
and it was all funded by Century 21, which was a total tax deduction for them. Yes. And then later on, uh, Redan Katz, the RK Plaza mm -hmm. uh, up in Sunny Isle, gave us a space. And we had that space until they got a tenant who wanted to rent that, which I wouldn't do again because I... I mean, I would do it again, but it would have to be on a written, not verbal agreement. Uh, and so let's not get off track. So to get back. So, okay, I could have this 20 feet or 25 foot wall in the collector's lounge. Yes. And I said, that's okay. And yeah, and it's so much money. So where does that money come from? It comes from the Rado Gidali or Gidali Rado Fund. Because even though I pissed away a lot of the money that I inherited, well, I didn't really piss it away. Can you cut that out of this? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we're only human beings. What are you, are you feeling funny being a human being? Huh? No, 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 no. Just doing what I want to do. I got, if I didn't like something, I picked myself up. I got on a plane and I left. Yes, that's good. That sounds, <laughs> I mean, was... sounds very appealing. <laughs> sounds like the right thing to do. And it was good. <laughs> and and uh, so, I, uh... I may have been extravagant with my kids. Yeah. Which is good. Yes, of course. Which is really How good. many kids do you have, if I may ask? I don't have any kids. I have a grown-up son, and I have a grown-up daughter. Okay. And I have no idea what I did, but I must have done something right, because they are very, very... Um... Good. <laughs> I don't know. What's the word? They're very accomplished. Uh, good. And they are very talented in what they do. And they inherited that from me. Good. Just like I inherited yeah, from, from my mom. mom. Yeah. I mean, when we went to New York, I'm going in circles. When we went to New York, one of my mom's friends said, do you know how to sew? She says, yeah, I knew how to sew. I mean, they all went to finish school back in those days. Yeah, I know how to sew. She says, okay, well, then I will take you into Bloomingdale's and you will do alteration. And she did that. And then from there, she went to a contractor who was contractor to fashion industry. And by the time, she was very long time. By the time she retired, she was Pierre Cardin's uh, assistant um, doing the uh, draping and the first uh, model. And, and no matter what she did, she did the best. Yes. And no matter what I do, I do the best. Yes, the best. And if I cannot do the best, I won't do it. Well, so I think we should if talk to I, I think that we should, you know, if, if I can do it almost the best, I will still do it. <laughs> yeah. If you can do what? Almost the best is fine there with is, me. No, there is no such thing oh, yeah, as there is. almost. There is, there is, no, of there course. There, of course. You know, it's just like saying, you know where infinity is when, when uh, you know, I study Kabbalah. And in, in that sense, I, I came up with the... Uh, uh, the ability to uh, um, define infinity, mm -hmm. that which is the most furthest away from us, that is completely inconceivable and unreachable, can be accomplished and achieved by placing something that is as close as possible to it, mm -hmm. which can be anywhere for that sake, because it's it's philosophy, psychology, psychology, philosophy, mm -hmm. and then sociology comes, takes mm -hmm. place, and and blows everything away, mm -hmm. and speaks about uh, the uh, integrity of the structure. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you choose a spot and you say this is as close as possible that can get to infinity, and you achieve proximity and access to infinity by doing so. But then you have to be consistent, and then. Because as human beings, we don't have, we're not proven to be so capable of doing that. Yes. So, it's so, so the task was always perceived as impossible. So it was neglected, um, unfortunately. But now they're regaining uh, awareness so they can, uh, so they, it becomes popular 
to to try and get to know yourself for real entering the back door uh, but still nevertheless getting the same kind of reception as if you were entering the front door but if we're gonna get philosophical there is no such thing as infinity and I have no idea that's why I put it right Wait, next to yes. infinity no even to me that is not the end of life because we go on there is you see certain times I remember doing paint I was in painting in my studio and I felt Vincent van Gogh presence how did I feel that because at that time I was doing the taping the same similar paintings that is beyond you because that's what we were learning and At uh, college at the university, Frank Stella and da 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 da. And we were all using taping. And all the masking tapes that came off, I had a chair, and I just kept putting them on top of each other. And it sort of became a sculptor that resembled a person. And every time I put the ear on, it fell off. And at other times, I felt others. It's because there's zero tolerance for, for, for listening. <laughs> huh? No, it wasn't. No, life, life, life presents that challenge, no, you no, know. No, no, no. One, one of the paintings, as I said to you, I just started becoming accepting the Judaism because my mom converted. I, had, I was sent to a nunnery and all that because of being Hebrew. And it's just been recently, actually, uh, that I'm welcoming the fact that uh, no matter what religion or what you call it, it's all one thing, uh, but, um, one God or one in, uh, entity. In, in, uh, oh, my gosh, after all these years, I'm still have an accent. Um, that, uh, so I felt... A presence within me, and there are many times I look at my painting and I say, "Wow, I did I really do this?" And I question my own, you can say ability or you can say my talent or whatever word you wanna attach to it, because it is something that is possesses me at the time just like now I don't know I, I'm not an interviewe quote and I have not done interviews since I left uh, New York in 89 uh, on TV and things like that but uh, yeah 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 um, so no there is no end I don't have an infinity. I don't have an end because I know that even after I stop being physically present on this world, I will go on because I know that others have, and I felt the presence of them and and it's just a wonderful feeling to be able. To put on canvas or to express doing what they were doing, and they did not they couldn't do it in their own earthly living time, but they are doing them through people and maybe maybe that is one of the reasons that I want to make a difference with the cancer yeah uh, and But one of the things that we started now we're going in circle back, you started to talk to about the Kabbalah now uh shall I drop names? I mean it's been known no Madonna has recovered through the Kabbalah, and she recovered from a certain way of life that she had back in the seventies and eighties, and uh I am now addressing. My birthright of of being Hebrew, and as i said i I did a painting that was 
of Moses. And I felt, I felt that. And then I did another painting uh, that was Moses at the burning bush with the angel in the fire when he got, I think, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but that's when he received the Ten Commandments. And um, the next thing that I would love to do, and it has to be funded somehow, I would like to do the 12 tribes because my father was a le le levy. Levy, yeah. My son is the same as my father and grandfather, Jacob Ben Levy. Yeah. And I would love to do the 12 tribes. Now, maybe Salvador Dali did uh, uh, the series for the same reason that he may have had uh, Sephardic blood in him. I mean, I have the Sephardic blood in me. And uh, what's his name? Uh, um, the Israeli artist, the one that does the, uh, you look at it this way and this way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um... He did, he did, uh, he did things, and actually, he. When I was in Miami, he, I was one of the, on the board when the Miami Jewish Film Festival started, and I dropped out from the board when they did not want to accept a painting, a ninety-two thousand painting that he donated. What's his name? Adami. Yeah, yeah um, the uh, yeah Agam. Agami. Yeah, and but we, we don't have so, that much time left, I so, uh, so I just so wanted... Anyway, I just would like to say this, that I think that uh, what the Center for Emerging Art does is to bring artists into the arts mainstream. It doesn't mean that they are uh, emerging because all art emerges from within. So it could be... Uh, it could be any of the... Uh, painters that are, and I, I don't know what the right word is, uh, th that are carried by dealers or galleries that are getting million dollar or 500,000. I mean, the, my paintings go for uh, 20, 30,000 and uh, 5,000 for some of them. However, I just hope it makes a difference. And I just hope it makes a difference in other people's lives. Good. So first of all, I commend you for that. And you know, I think you should be feel proud of yourself to engage in that uh, kind of effort. And uh, I, I think we learned a, a thing or two uh, in, in the hour that we spent here together. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the next gathering between you and I will just do um, a, a freestyling back and forth all the way from uh, the epitome of surrealism into the, into the sharp edge of uh, um, modernism and uh, out of which uh, abstract expressionism is celebrating constantly. Yeah, so if, everything is an expressionism. Yes. Every painting, sculpture is an expressionism. Yeah. One of my, one of my, I have a sculpture that's at FIU at Arcos Architecture. And what was that? I had, I had to shred $250,000 worth of contracts and grants and canceled checks. But I didn't throw them out. I put them all in a plastic bag. And I wound up making a, a big sculpture out of them. Okay, now you hold that thought because we're going to get together again. And as we're running out of time, I wanted to mention that um, Eva Rado is here with us on this Wednesday morning, June 26, 2024, here with the Hello, Hello Show. And uh, we're going to be here tomorrow as much as we were here yesterday and as again as much as we're here uh, 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 June 26, Wednesday morning here with the Hello, Hello Show. And, of course, don't forget that we are running – those group art shows uh, um, that it's ongoing for about 27 years. So make it your business to check us out and enjoy it. Very exciting uh, to uh, uh, do it. Uh, artists, uh, Victor Carpel and uh, Fanny Ulin is going to be here for the month of August and so much more. Again, thank you to my guest, uh, Eva. Eva, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank I you. wish you luck. Thank you. And it's so on me because Usually, I just talk too much. This time, I didn't. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to have you here. 
and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again.